that makes me think um, when we moved, I was, we were living in Michigan at the time we always considered it the North, but actually it's the North of the Midwestern states. But then moving to a Southern state, I definitely had a Northern accent and some of the words I used were different too, like pop for, for soda. soda. So I was, I was ridiculed by kids for my accent for sure. Yeah, you know, another difficult thing for me was that the area that we moved to was affluent. And, I mean, we certainly were not rich. So, you know, uh, and you could see it from the clothes we wore to the cars that my parents drove. I mean, <laughs> you know, we had these old clunkers and everyone else in the neighborhood had these brand new cars, you know. So it was pretty obvious, like... We would turn a lot of heads driving past people, you know. Oh my God, that sounds so much like like my situation. We moved from a very blue collar area. My my parents, being teachers, were very blue collar as well to a very affluent area. A lot of doctors and lawyers, and I can remember moving. We, <laughs> my mom drove this yellow and black gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they don't make get, those anymore, no, and there's a reason for it. <laughs> I would get dropped off at school from come in the gremlin. I would be so embarrassed. And then, you know, we didn't have the designer clothes that all the kids we went to school with wore. So we, it just was very stressful trying to keep up with the Joneses and buying these designer clothes. It was it was uh, very stressful for me and my brothers, but also we put a lot of pressure on our parents to buy these, and they just couldn't afford it. Yeah, that sounds familiar. I, I got to tell you one story I can remember. My mom, actually, she can't sew, and she had sewn me this pair of knickers. Knickers at one point were back in style. Do you know what those are? Yes, yeah. And they were horrible looking. And I wore them to school, and all the kids were making fun of me on the playground. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was just standing in the corner by myself about to cry. And then I went home. And I was like, Mom, I want real knickers. I want you to buy them in the store for yeah, me. Yeah, kids can be cruel. <laughs> I know kids can be cruel because I'll tell you what. I had, to, uh, I had a, a really bad experience right before I started school the summer that I moved to Pennsylvania. I'm playing football with the kids in the neighborhood, uh -huh. and of course, what happens is I get tackled, and someone falls on my leg, and it breaks <laughs> my ankle. Oh, no. I couldn't believe it. So I'm sitting there trying to, you know, act as uh, if, like, it doesn't hurt that much, but, I mean, it hurt a lot. And then, you know, the kids thought I was crying wolf. They didn't really think I was hurt at all. <laughs> So I have to walk away and uh, walk home on a broken ankle. And, I mean, I just felt like screaming at the top of my lungs. I was in so much pain, but I couldn't, I couldn't do it because I didn't want the kids to think I was like some wimp. Oh. So it gets worse. <laughs> I have to go to school with a cast on my leg to start the school year. <laughs> so I'm the new kid with the thick accent. The clothes that look out of place, you know, nobody knows me, and I have a cast on my foot, and my, you know, I can't take a shower, you know, I can't shower the legs, so my toes are a little dirty. I mean, I wanted nothing more than to move back to New York that very moment, the first day of school. God, I bet you stuck out like a sore thumb. Oh, man, you can't imagine. It was the worst. I, I mean, I think for the first two years I lived in Pennsylvania, I just wanted to hop on a bus and get back to New York as fast as I could. Yep, that was me wanting to move back to Michigan, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, at least you moved at an earlier age. It's a lot easier because, you know, when you're younger, it's just, uh, you know, all the kids are getting familiar with each other. But when you move and you're a little older, the kids already know each other. You know, they've already combined the elementary schools into the middle school uh, for when I had moved there. Yeah, but you know, ironically enough, um, my older brother, I think, had an easier time adapting, and he was starting seventh grade. I was starting third grade. My younger brother was starting second grade, and my younger brother and I had a really rough time. Yeah. Well, you know, 
as much as I hated it when I first uh, had moved to Pennsylvania, now in looking back, I think it was really a blessing in disguise. I mean, there were so many other opportunities that came available to us from living in Pennsylvania and going to a school district that, you know, was uh, had a lot more money. And the education that we got was better, and it just provided me uh, with a much better starting point for uh, college. Right. Hi, this is Kristen Dodds. And this is Joe Weiss. And we just wanted to let you know that this material is copyrighted in the year 2008 by Learn Real English LLC. www.learnrealenglish.com Hi, welcome to the mini story lesson for the conversation Moving as a Child Part 2. Okay, let's get started with the story. Julia Roberts' house in Los Angeles was on fire. She called her friend Will Smith. He thought that she was just crying wolf. Then she started to scream at the top of her lungs. So Will Smith called the fireman. The fire truck got to her house, but they could not stop the fire. The house burned down, so Julia Roberts had to move. It was pretty obvious that she was upset, but she had to leave Los Angeles. She moved to a very small town. At first, it was rough. She was the only movie star in town, so she stuck out like a sore thumb. But the people were nice, so it was easy to get familiar with them. One day, she met a nice man at a cafe. They fell in love and got married. When she looks back on her wedding, she smiles, and now she thinks that the fire was a blessing in disguise. Okay, so that's our story. Now, I will read the story again, and I will ask questions as I read it this time. Please answer the questions out loud, and if you need a little more time to think, then you can always pause your computer or your iPod, and then when you're ready to answer the question, then you can press play again. And as always, if you do not wish to answer the questions out loud, and you prefer to just sit and listen, well then that's fine as well. Okay, let's get started. Julia Roberts' house in Los Angeles was on fire. Was Julia Roberts' house on fire? Yes, it was. Her house was on fire. What happened to the house? Well, it was on fire. The house was on fire. Whose house was on fire? Julia Roberts's. Julia Roberts's house was on fire. Was Will Smith's house on fire? No, it wasn't Will Smith's house. What was on fire? A house. Julia Roberts's house was on fire. Was Julia Roberts's car or house on fire? Her house. Her house was on fire. Where was Julia Roberts's house? In Los Angeles. Her house was in Los Angeles. Was her house in Paris? No, it wasn't in Paris. Was her house in Los Angeles? Yes, yes it was. Her house was in Los Angeles. She called her friend Will Smith. Did she call her friend Will Smith? Yes, she did. She called her friend Will Smith. 
What did she do? Well, she called her friend Will Smith. Did she call Will Smith or make a hamburger? She called Will Smith. She didn't make a hamburger. Who called Will Smith? Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts called Will Smith. Did Tom Cruise call Will Smith? No, it wasn't Tom Cruise. Did Julia Roberts call Will Smith? Yes, she did. Julia Roberts called Will Smith. Who did she call? Will Smith. She called Will Smith. Did she call Tom Cruise or Will Smith? Will Smith. She called Will Smith. Is Will Smith her friend? Yes, he is. She called her friend Will Smith. So Will Smith is her friend. He thought that she was just crying wolf. Did he think that she was just crying wolf? Yes. Yes, he did. He thought that she was just crying wolf. What did he think? That she was crying wolf. He thought that she was crying wolf. Did he think that she was just trying to get attention by saying something that was not true? Yes, he did. He thought that she was crying wolf, which is the same as saying he thought that she was just trying to get attention by saying something that was not true. Crying wolf means to say something that is not true in order to get attention. Did he think that the house was on fire? No, no he didn't. He thought that she was crying wolf. So he thought that she was saying something that was not true. So he did not think that the house was on fire. Who thought that she was just crying wolf? Will Smith. Will Smith did. He thought that she was just crying wolf. Did Will Smith or Tom Cruise think that she was crying wolf? Will Smith did. Tom Cruise did not think she was just crying wolf. Did Will Smith think that she was just trying to get attention? Yes. Yes, he did. He thought that she was just crying wolf, which means the same thing as he thought that she was just trying to get attention. Who did he think was crying wolf? Julia Roberts. He thought that Julia Roberts was crying wolf. Did he think that his wife was crying wolf? No, he didn't think that his wife was crying wolf. Did he think that Julia Roberts was trying to get attention? Yes, if you're crying wolf, you're trying to get attention. Did he think that Julia Roberts was trying to get attention by saying something that was not true? Yes, he did. He thought that she was crying wolf, which is the same thing as saying he thought that she was trying to get attention by saying something that was not true. Crying wolf means to try to get attention by saying something that was not true. In this case, he thought that the house being on fire was what was not true 
that she was sane. So he thought that she said the house was on fire, even though it wasn't, just to get attention. Then she started to scream at the top of her lungs. Did she start to scream at the top of her lungs? Yes, she did. She started to scream at the top of her lungs. What did she start to do? Scream at the top of her lungs. She started to scream at the top of her lungs. Did she talk quietly? No, she did not talk quietly. She was screaming at the top of her lungs. Did she start to yell very loudly? Yes, she did. She started to scream at the top of her lungs, which is the same thing as saying she started to yell very loudly. If you scream at the top of your lungs, you are yelling very loudly. Who started to scream at the top of her lungs? Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts started to scream at the top of her lungs. Did Julia Roberts start to scream at the top of her lungs? Yes. Yes, she did. Julia Roberts started to scream at the top of her lungs. Did Julia Roberts start to yell very loudly? Yes, she did. She started to scream at the top of her lungs, which is the same thing as saying she started to yell very loudly. Why did she start to scream at the top of her lungs? Well, she started to scream at the top of her lungs because her house was on fire. So Will Smith called the fireman. Did Will Smith call the fireman? Yes, he did. Will Smith called the fireman. So what did Will Smith do? He called the fireman. Did he get some water or call the fireman? Call the fireman. He called the fireman. Who called the fireman? Will Smith. Will Smith called the fireman. Did Will Smith or Julia Roberts call the fireman? Will Smith. Will Smith called the fireman. Who did Will Smith call? The fireman. Will Smith called the fireman. Did Will Smith call Julia Roberts or the fireman? The fireman. Will Smith called the fireman. The fire truck got to her house. Did the fire truck get to her house? Yes, it did. The fire truck got to her house. What got to her house? The fire truck. The fire truck got to her house. Did the fire truck or the plumber get to her house. The fire truck. The fire truck got to her house. Where did the fire truck go? To her house. The fire truck went to her house. Did the fire truck go to her house or to the library? Her house. 
it went to her house. Whose house did the fire truck go to? Julia Roberts' house. It went to Julia Roberts' house. Did the fire truck go to Julia Roberts' house or Will Smith's house? Julia Roberts' house. The fire truck got to Julia Roberts' house. But they could not stop the fire. Did they stop the fire? No, they could not stop the fire. Who was not able to stop the fire? The firemen. The firemen were not able to stop the fire. What were they unable to stop? The fire. They were unable to stop the fire. Were they unable to stop the fire? or the fire truck? The fire. They were unable to stop the fire. The house burned down, so Julia Roberts had to move. Did the house burn down? Yes, it did. The house burned down. What happened to the house? It burned down. What burned down? The house. The house burned down. Did the house or the tree burn down? The house. The house burned down. Whose house burned down? Julia Roberts' house. Julia Roberts' house burned down. Did Will Smith's house burn down? No, it wasn't Will Smith's house that burned down. Did Julia Roberts' house burn down? Yes, Julia Roberts' house burned down. Did Julia Roberts have to move? Yes, she did. She had to move. What did Julia Roberts have to do? To move. She had to move. Did she have to eat dinner or move? Move. She had to move. Why did Julia Roberts have to move? Well, it was because her house burned down, so she didn't have a house to live in anymore. It was pretty obvious that she was upset. Was it pretty obvious that she was upset? Yes, yes it was. It was pretty obvious that she was upset. Was it easy to understand that she was upset? Yes, it was. It was pretty obvious. So that's the same thing as saying it was pretty easy for someone to understand that she was upset. Pretty obvious means easy to understand. What was pretty obvious? That she was upset. It was pretty obvious that she was upset. Was it pretty obvious that she was happy or upset? That she was upset. It was pretty obvious that she was upset. Who was upset? Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts was upset. Was Will Smith upset? 
No, Will Smith wasn't upset. Was Julia Roberts upset? Yes, yes she was. She was upset. Was it easy to understand that she was upset? Yes, it was pretty obvious that she was upset, which is the same thing as saying it was easy to understand that she was upset. When something is pretty obvious, it means that it is easy to understand. But she had to leave Los Angeles. Did she have to leave Los Angeles? Yes, yes she did. She had to leave Los Angeles. What did she have to do? Leave Los Angeles. She had to leave Los Angeles. Did she have to go to the beach or leave Los Angeles? Leave Los Angeles. She had to leave Los Angeles. Who had to leave Los Angeles? Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts had to leave Los Angeles. Did Will Smith have to leave Los Angeles? No, Will Smith didn't have to leave Los Angeles. Did Julia Roberts have to leave Los Angeles? Yes, Julia Roberts had to leave Los Angeles. Where did she have to leave? Los Angeles. She had to leave Los Angeles. Did she have to leave New York? No, she didn't have to leave New York. Did she have to leave Los Angeles? Yes, she had to leave Los Angeles. She moved to a very small town. Did she move to a very small town? Yes, she did. She moved to a very small town. Did she fly to Paris or move to a very small town? She moved to a very small town. Who moved to a very small town? Julia Roberts did. Julia Roberts moved to a very small town. Did Will Smith or Julia Roberts move to a very small town? Julia Roberts did. Julia Roberts moved to a very small town. Where did she move? To a very small town. She moved to a very small town. Did she move to Paris? No, she did not move to Paris. Paris is not a very small town. Did she move to a very small town? Yes, she did. She moved to a very small town. Did she move to a large town? Nope. No, she did not move to a large town. She moved to a very small town. At first, it was rough. Was it rough at first? Yes, it was. At first, it was rough. Was it easy at first? No, it wasn't easy. It was rough. 
Was it difficult at first? Yes. Yes, it was. At first, it was rough, which is the same thing as saying, at first, it was difficult. Rough means difficult. When was it rough? At first. At first, it was rough. Was it rough four years later? No, it wasn't rough four years later. It was rough at first, which is the same thing as saying in the beginning it was rough. What was rough at first? Moving to a small town. Moving to a small town was rough at first. She was the only movie star in town. Was she the only movie star in town? Yes, she was. She was the only movie star in town. Who was the only movie star in town? Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts was the only movie star in town. Was Will Smith the only movie star in town? No, it wasn't Will Smith. Was Julia Roberts the only movie star in town? Yes, Julia Roberts was the only movie star in town. Was Tom Cruise in town? No, Tom Cruise wasn't in town. He's a movie star, and Julia Roberts was the only movie star in town, so Tom Cruise wasn't in town. How many movie stars were in town? One, just one. Julia Roberts was the only movie star in town, so there was only one movie star in town. Were there two movie stars in town? No, there was only one, and Julia Roberts was the only one. She was the only movie star in town. So she stuck out like a sore thumb. Did she stick out like a sore thumb? Yes, she did. She stuck out like a sore thumb. Did she look like she did not belong? Yes. Yes, she did. She stuck out like a sore thumb, which is the same thing as saying she looked like she did not belong. Stuck out like a sore thumb means to look like you do not belong. Who stuck out like a sore thumb? Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts stuck out like a sore thumb. Did Tom Cruise stick out like a sore thumb? No. It wasn't Tom Cruise. Did Julia Roberts look like she did not belong? Yes, Julia Roberts looked like she did not belong. She stuck out like a sore thumb, which is the same thing as saying she looked like she did not belong. Why did she stick out like a sore thumb? Well, it was because she was the only movie star in town. People probably recognized her from her movies, and they were not used to seeing a movie star in town. So when they saw her, she stuck out like a sore thumb. But the people were nice. Were the people nice? 
Yes, they were. The people were nice. What were the people like? They were very nice. The people were very nice. Were the people mean? No, they weren't mean. They were very nice. Were the people friendly? Yes, they probably were because they were very nice. So they were probably friendly as well. Who were nice? Were the people in the town nice? Yes, they were. The people in the town were nice. Who were the people in the town nice to? Were they nice to Julia Roberts? Yes, yes, we can say that. We can say that the people were nice to Julia Roberts. So it was easy to get familiar with them. Was it easy to get familiar with them? Yes, it was. It was easy to get familiar with them. What was easy to do? To get familiar with them. It was easy to get familiar with them. Was it easy to get to know them? Yes, it was. It was easy to get familiar with them, which is the same thing as saying it was easy to get to know them. To get familiar with means to get to know. Who was it easy to get familiar with? The people in the town. It was easy to get familiar with the people in the town. Was it easy to get familiar with the people in the town? Yes. Yes, that's correct. It was easy to get familiar with the people in the town. Was it easy to get to know the people in the town? Yes. Yes, it was. It was easy to get familiar with the people in the town, which is the same thing as saying it was easy to get to know the people in the town. Get familiar with means to get to know. Why was it easy to get familiar with the people in the town? Well, it was because they were so nice. They were so nice, so it was easy to get familiar with them, or it was easy to get to know them. One day, she met a nice man at a cafe. Did she meet a nice man at a cafe? Yes. Yes, she did. She met a nice man at a cafe. What did she do? She met a nice man at a cafe. Did she eat a hamburger or meet a nice man at a cafe? She met a nice man at a cafe. Who met a nice man at a cafe? Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts met a nice man at a cafe. Did Will Smith Meet a nice man at a cafe? No, it wasn't Will Smith. Did Julia Roberts meet a nice man at a cafe? Yes, Julia Roberts met a nice man at a cafe. Who did she meet? A nice man. She met a nice man. 
Did she meet a woman with brown hair or a nice man? A nice man. She met a nice man. Did she meet an angry man? No, he wasn't angry. Did she meet a nice man? Yes, yes she did. She met a nice man. Where did she meet a nice man? At a cafe. She met a nice man at a cafe. Did she meet him at the library or at a cafe? At a cafe. She met him at a cafe. Did Julia Roberts meet a nice man at a cafe? Yes, she did. Julia Roberts met a nice man at a cafe. They fell in love and got married. Did they fall in love and get married? Yes, they did. They fell in love and got married. Okay, so what did they do? They fell in love and got married. Did they fall on the ground? No, they didn't fall on the ground. Did they fall in love? Yes, they did. They fell in love. Did they get married? Yes, they fell in love and got married. Who fell in love and got married? Well, Julia Roberts and the nice man she met at the cafe fell in love and got married. Did Julia Roberts fall in love? Yes, she did. Julia Roberts fell in love. Did Julia Roberts get married? Yes, she did. Julia Roberts got married, too. Did Julia Roberts fall in love with the man she met at a cafe? Yes, she did. Julia Roberts fell in love with the man she met at a cafe. Did Julia Roberts get married to the man that she met at a cafe? Yes, she did. Julia Roberts got married to the man that she met at a cafe. When she looks back on her wedding, she smiles. Does she smile when she looks back on her wedding? Yes, she does. She smiles when she looks back on her wedding. Does she smile when she thinks about her wedding? Yes, she does. She smiles when she looks back on her wedding, which is the same thing as saying she smiles when she thinks about her wedding. When you look back on something, that means you think about something that has happened already. What does she do when she looks back on her wedding? She smiles. She smiles when she looks back on her wedding. What does she do when she thinks about her wedding? She smiles. She smiles when she looks back on her wedding, which is the same thing as saying she smiles when she thinks about her wedding. Does she get angry 
when she thinks about her wedding? No, she doesn't get angry. She smiles. Who smiles when she looks back on her wedding? Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts smiles when she looks back on her wedding. Does Julia Roberts' mom smile? No, it's not her mom. Does Julia Roberts smile? Yes, Julia Roberts smiles. When does she smile? Well, she smiles when she looks back on her wedding, or when she thinks about her wedding. Does she smile when she sees her dog? No, it's not when she sees her dog that she smiles. Does she smile when she looks back on her wedding? Yes, she does. She smiles when she looks back on her wedding. Does Julia Roberts smile when she thinks about her wedding? Yes, she does. Julia Roberts smiles when she looks back on her wedding, which is the same thing as saying Julia Roberts smiles when she thinks about her wedding. To look back means to think about something that has already happened. And now she thinks that the fire was a blessing in disguise. Does she think that the fire was a blessing in disguise? Yes, she does. She thinks that the fire was a blessing in disguise. What was a blessing in disguise? The fire. The fire was a blessing in disguise. Did she first think that the fire was bad? Yes. Yes, she did. She thinks that the fire was a blessing in disguise, which means at first she did not think it was good. She thought it was bad. Does she now think that the fire was good? Yes, she does. She thinks that it was a blessing in disguise. If something is a blessing in disguise, it means that you think it is good, but you did not think it was good at first. So she thought it was a blessing in disguise, which means that she did not think the fire was good at first, but now she does think the fire was good. Does she now think that it was good that her house in Los Angeles burned down? Yes, she does. She thinks that it was a blessing in disguise. Who thinks that the fire was a blessing in disguise? Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts thinks that it was a blessing in disguise. Does Will Smith or Julia Roberts think that the fire was a blessing in disguise? Julia Roberts does. Julia Roberts thinks that the fire was a blessing in disguise. Does Julia Roberts now think that the fire was good? Yes, she does. She thinks that it was a blessing in disguise. Did Julia Roberts first think that the fire was bad? Yes, she did. She now thinks that it is a blessing in disguise, which means that at first she thought it was bad, but now she thinks that it was good. Okay, that brings us to the end of our story, which means we are now at the end of the mini story lesson for the conversation Moving as a Child Part 2. Now it is your turn to tell the story by yourself. Remember that you do not need to memorize every word in the story, 
but that you do need to use the idioms and vocabulary words that we discussed. Okay, so those are crying wolf, scream at the top of her lungs, pretty obvious, rough, stuck out like a sore thumb, get familiar with, looks back, and a blessing in disguise. Okay, so now tell the story on your own. And remember, you can listen to this mini-story lesson as many times as you need to. Okay, good luck. See you next time. Hi, this is Kristen Dodds. And this is Joe Weiss. And we just wanted to let you know that this material has been copyrighted in the year 2008 by Learn Real English, LLC. www.learnrealenglish.com Hi! You are listening to the Point of View Stories for Moving as a Child, Part 2. Today, I'll be telling you three different versions of the story that you first heard in the mini-story lesson, Moving as a Child, Part 2. Each story will either be told from a different point in time or by a different person. Let's get started by telling the story as if it is happening right now. Okay, let's go. Julia Roberts' house in Los Angeles is on fire. She calls her friend Will Smith. He thinks that she is just crying wolf. Then she starts to scream at the top of her lungs. So Will Smith calls the fireman. The fire truck gets to her house, but they cannot stop the fire. The house burns down, so Julia Roberts has to move. It's pretty obvious that she is upset, but she has to leave Los Angeles. She moves to a very small town. At first, it is rough. She is the only movie star in town, so she sticks out like a sore thumb. But the people are nice, so it is easy to become familiar with them. One day, she meets a nice man at a cafe. They fall in love and get married. When she looks back on her wedding, she smiles, and now she thinks that the fire was a blessing in disguise. Okay, so that is the story as if it is happening right now. Now let's hear the story as if it will happen sometime in the future. So we will think of the story happening two years from now. Okay, here we go. Two years from now, Julia Roberts' house in Los Angeles will be on fire. She will call her friend Will Smith. He's going to think that she is just crying wolf. Then, she's going to start to scream at the top of her lungs. So Will Smith will call the fireman. The fire truck will get to her house, but they will not be able to stop the fire. The house is going to burn down, so Julia Roberts will have to move. It will be pretty obvious that she is going to be upset. But she will have to leave Los Angeles. She is going to move to a very small town. At first, it will be rough. She will be the only movie star in town, so she's going to stick out like a sore thumb. But the people will be nice, so it's going to be easy to become familiar with them. One day, she's going to meet a nice man at a cafe. They'll fall in love and get married. When she looks back on her wedding, she'll smile and she'll think that the fire was a blessing in disguise. Okay, so that's the end of the story where we talk about the events that are going to happen two years from now. Now we're going to hear the story from Julia Roberts' point of view. 
So in this version, it is going to be as if Julia Roberts is telling you the story. Okay, here we go. My house in Los Angeles was on fire. I called my friend Will Smith. He thought that I was just crying wolf. Then I started to scream at the top of my lungs. So Will Smith called the fireman. The fire truck got to my house, but they could not stop the fire. The house burned down, so I had to move. It was pretty obvious that I was upset, but I had to leave Los Angeles. I moved to a very small town. At first, it was rough. I was the only movie star in town, so I stuck out like a sore thumb. But the people were nice, so it was easy to get familiar with them. One day, I met a nice man at a cafe. We fell in love and got married. When I look back on my wedding, I smile, and now I think that the fire was a blessing in disguise. Okay, that brings us to the end of the point of view stories for Moving as a Child, Part 2. Now go back and listen to each of these stories. Listen to them many times. After you feel like you know the stories, then try to tell each story on your own. Remember to take your time and relax. Go through the stories slowly if you need to, and make sure that you learn them deeply. Okay, that's all for now. We'll see you next time. Hi, this is Kristen Dodds. And this is Joe Weiss. And we just wanted to let you know that this material has been copyrighted in the year 2009 by Learn Real English, LLC. www.learnrealenglish.com Hi, and welcome to the vocabulary lesson for the conversation Moving as a Child, Part 2. This is the second part to the conversation Moving as a Child. Now in this conversation, Joe and I each continue talking about our experiences of moving when we were younger. Okay, let's begin. I start off by saying, that makes me think um, and um is just a filler here. It's not really needed. And I go on to say, when we moved, I was, we were living in Michigan. Now, Michigan is a state in America. It's actually in the north of the middle states. Michigan. And I go on to say, at the time, we always considered it or I'm saying we always thought of it as the North. But actually, or I'm saying, but really, it's the North of the Midwestern states. Midwestern states. These are states in the middle of America. Midwestern states. And then I say, but then moving to a Southern state, I definitely had a Northern accent. Now, accent, this is the way it sounds when someone speaks. Accent. For example, the people in the southern part of America have a strong accent. Accent. And then I say, and some of the words I used were different too. Like, or I'm saying such as, pop for for now pop this is a drink pop and then joe says soda soda is a drink also it's the same as pop soda and then i finish by saying soda and then i say so and so is just a filler here. It's not really needed. And I go on to say, I was, 
I was ridiculed by kids for my accent for sure. Now kids, this is just slang for children. And when I say ridiculed, ridiculed means made a mean joke about someone. Ridiculed. For example, my brothers were mean to me when we were young. They ridiculed me a lot. Ridiculed. And Joe says, yeah. Now, yeah is slang or casual or informal for yes. And he, Joe goes on to say, you know, another difficult thing for me was that the area that we moved to was affluent. Now, affluent, this means rich, affluent. For example, when you drive through affluent parts of San Francisco, you see very nice houses, affluent. And Joe goes on to say, and I mean, or he's saying, what I'm trying to say is that, and he says, we certainly were not rich, or we definitely were not rich. And Joe says, so, you know, and you know is just short for you know. You won't see this in written English, but you will hear it in conversational English. And then Joe says, uh, and uh is just filler. It's not really needed. And Joe goes on to say, and you could see it from the clothes we wore to the cars that my parents drove. I mean... And then I just laugh. And Joe says, you know, we had these old clunkers. Now, old clunkers, these are old cars that have a lot of problems and look bad. Old clunkers. <laughs> For example, my parents used to drive old clunkers when I was younger because we did not have a lot of money. Old clunkers. And Joe goes on to say, and everyone else in the neighborhood has these brand new cars. Now, neighborhood, this is the area where you live. Neighborhood. An example of neighbor neighborhood would be, there were a lot of children in my neighborhood when I was a child. Neighborhood. And when Joe says brand new cars, brand new, this means completely new, brand new. An example of brand new would be, I have never owned a brand new car. Brand new. And then Joe goes on to say, you know, so it was pretty obvious. Pretty obvious. This means really easy to understand pretty obvious. For example, math might be pretty obvious for some people, but it is difficult for me. Pretty obvious. And then, he, and then Joe says, like, and like is just filler here. It's not really needed. Like we would turn a lot of heads driving past people. Turn a lot of heads. Turn a lot of heads means to get a lot of attention or to make people look. Turn a lot of heads. For example, when the fire truck drove by, it turned a lot of heads because it was so loud. Turn a lot of heads. Or in this example, turn, turned a lot of heads. And then I say, oh my God. And now I'm just showing emotions such as, I don't believe it. And I go on to say, that sounds so much like, like my situation. Or I'm saying, like, what happened to me? And I go on to say, we moved from a very blue collar area. Now blue collar, 
this is blue collar area. This is uh, where the people have jobs that do not make a lot of money. Blue collar. And I go on to say, my, my parents being teachers were very blue collar as well. Or I'm saying they were bl very blue collar also. And then I say to a very affluent area, a lot of doctors and lawyers. And I can remember moving, we, and I laugh, my mom drove this yellow and black gremlin. And I laugh again. Now, Gremlin, this is the name of an American car that is no longer made. They don't make it anymore. A gremlin. And then Joe laughs and he says, yeah, they don't make those anymore. And I laugh and say, no, I. And Joe says, and there's a reason for it. So Joe is saying this because gremlins were not very good cars. They weren't reliable or not very good cars. And then I laugh and I say, I would get dropped off at school. Or I'm saying I would get taken to school from or come in the gremlin. I would be so embarrassed. And then, you know, we didn't have the designer clothes that all the kids we went to school with wore. So, designer clothes. Designer clothes. These are expensive clothes. Designer clothes. For example, I have never had enough money to buy designer clothes. Designer clothes. And then I go on to say, so we, we, it just, and just is just filler here. It's, it doesn't really mean anything. And I go on to say, was very stressful trying to keep up with the Joneses. Stressful means makes you worry. Stressful. For example, when you have children, it can be stressful. Stressful. And when I say keep up with the Joneses, this means to try to own all the same things as people you know in order to seem as good as them. Keep up with the Joneses. For example, let's say when I was younger that I would come home from school and tell my mom that I wanted her to buy me some designer shirts and some designer jeans because that's what all the other children were wearing. My mom might say, no, I'm not buying those for you because they're too expensive. So stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. And then I go on to say, in buying these designer clothes, it was uh, very stressful for me and my brothers. But also, we put a lot of pressure on, or I'm saying we always asked our parents, put a lot of pressure on our parents to buy these. And they just couldn't afford it. Now, couldn't afford it. This means did not have enough money did not have enough money to buy something, couldn't afford it. For example, even if I wanted to buy a new car, I couldn't afford it. And then Joe says, yeah, that sounds familiar. Or he's saying, that sounds like what happened to me. And I say, I, c I gotta tell you one story I can remember. I gotta, this is short or slang for I've got to. And I go on to say, my mom actually, and actually is just filler here. It's not really needed. And I go on to say, she can't sew. Sew meaning she can't make clothes in this situation. And I say, and she had sewn me this pair of knickers. Now, knickers, this is a type of girl's pants 
that do not go below the knees. Knickers. Now when I say pair of knickers, a pair usually means two. But we say pair when talking about one pants or one pant. So I would say a pair of jeans, a pair of pants, a pair of knickers. And I go on to say knickers at one point, or I'm saying at one time, were back in style. Do you know what those are? Now back in style, this means to be fashionable again. Back in style. An example of back in style would be music made in the 1980s is back in style. Back in style. And Joe says, yeah, or yes, yeah. And I say, and they were horrible looking. Now horrible means very bad. For example, the weather was horrible. It rained all day. Horrible. And I go on to say, and I wore them to school. I wore them. Um is short for them. I wore them to school and all the kids were making fun of me on the playground. Making, this is short for making making fun of me. This means they were teasing me or they were making jokes about me. They were laughing at me. On the playground. Playground is a place where children play. Playground. For an example of playground, the park near my house has a very nice playground. I always see children playing there. Playground. And Joe says, oh my gosh. And he's just showing emotion here. And I say, I was just standing in the corner by myself about to cry or almost ready to cry. Now standing in the corner, standing in the corner means standing away from the other children. Standing in the corner. For example, the teacher made the child stand in the corner because she was bad. Standing in the corner. And then I go on to say, and then I went home and I was like, or I'm saying, I told my mom, I was like, I told my mom, mom, I want real knickers. I want you to buy them in the store for me. And Joe says, yeah, kids can be cruel. Cruel, this is mean. Kids can be mean. Cruel. For example, my brothers were sometimes cruel to me when I was a child. Cruel. And then I just laugh. And Joe says, I know kids can be cruel because I'll tell you what. Now what Joe is saying here is, this is what I think, or I'll, I'll tell you what. And Joe goes on to say, I had to, uh, I had a really bad experience right before I started school, the summer that I moved to Pennsylvania. I had a really bad experience. What Joe is saying here is, I had something bad happen right before I started school. Now right is a filler word, it's not really needed. Right before I started school, the summer that I moved to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, this is a state in the Northeast of America. Pennsylvania. And Joe says, I'm playing football with the kids in the neighborhood. Now playing, this is short for playing, playing. And I say, uh-huh, just to let Joe know that I understand what he's saying or that I'm listening to him. And Joe goes on to say, and of course, or he's saying, and then what happens is 
I get tackled. Tackled. This means thrown to the ground. Tackled. For example, the thief was tackled by the policeman. Tackled. And Joe goes on to say, and someone falls on my leg and it breaks my ankle. Ankle is the part of your body where the lower leg connects to the foot. And then I laugh and say, oh no. So I'm showing emotions such as feeling sorry for Joe getting hurt. And then Joe says, I couldn't believe it. So I'm sitting there. Sitting is short for sitting. Sitting there trying to, and trying is short for trying. Trying to, you know, act as uh, if, like, it doesn't hurt that much. Or it doesn't hurt a lot. But, I mean, it hurt a lot. When Joe says, I mean, he's saying, or what I'm trying to say is that it hurt a lot. So when Joe's talking about getting hurt, he's just sitting there after he gets hurt. He's sitting on the ground and he's trying to show the other children that it doesn't hurt, but it really did hurt him. And then Joe goes on to say, and then, you know, the kids thought I was crying wolf. Crying is short for crying. Crying wolf means to try to get attention by saying something that is not true. Crying wolf. For example, Thomas always seems to be sick. Sometimes I think that he is just crying wolf. Crying wolf. And then Joe says, they didn't really think I was hurt at all. And I laugh. And then Joe says, so I have to walk away and uh, walk home on a broken ankle. And I mean, I just felt like screaming at the top of my lungs. Screaming. This is uh, short for screaming. Screaming. Screaming at the top of my lungs. This means yelling very loud. Screaming at the top of my lungs. For example, when the thief took the woman's purse, she screamed at the top of her lungs. And then Joe goes on to say, I was in so much pain, or he's saying it hurts so much. And, and Joe says, but I couldn't, I couldn't do it because I didn't want the kids to think I was like some wimp. Wimp, this is someone who is weak. Not strong, they are weak. And then I laugh and I say, oh, oh, I'm just showing emotion. And Joe says, so it gets worse. And then he laughs. And Joe goes on to say, I have to go to school with a cast on my leg to start the school year. Cast. Cast is something that is put on your arm or leg when it is broken. Cast. For example, I broke my arm when I fell off a horse. So the doctor put a cast on it. Cast. And then I just laugh. And Joe says, so I'm the new kid with the thick accent, or he's saying with the strong accent. And he goes on to say, the clothes that look out of place look at a place. This means to look like you do not belong or fit in. Look at a place. For example, women in Las Vegas wear a lot of makeup and I don't wear any makeup. So I felt like I really looked at a place when I was in Las Vegas. Look at a place. And Joe goes on to say, you know, Nobody knows me, and I have a cast on my foot, and my, you know, I can't take a shower, you know, I can't shower the leg, or he's saying I can't clean my leg, 
So my toes are a little dirty and I'm just laughing. And then Joe, Joe goes on to say, I mean, I wanted nothing more than nothing is short for nothing. So he's saying, I, I really wanted, he goes on to say, to move back to New York that very moment. Or he's saying right then at that time, I really wanted to move back to New York at that time. And then Joe says, the first day of school. So the first day of school, he just wanted to move right back to New York. And then I say, God, just showing emotion. I bet you stuck out like a sore thumb. I bet. Here, bet means I think. I think you stuck out like a sore thumb. Stuck out like a sore thumb. This means same as look out of place. To look like you do not belong or fit in. For example, women in Las, in Las Vegas wear a lot of makeup. And again, I don't wear any makeup. So I felt like I stuck out like a sore thumb when I was in Las Vegas. Stuck out like a sore thumb. And Joe says, oh, man, you can't imagine. Or he's saying, you can't even begin to think about, about it. And then Joe says, it was the worst. I, I mean, I think for the first two years I lived in Pennsylvania, I just wanted to hop on a bus and get back to New York as fast as I could. Hop on a bus. This means get on a bus. Hop on on a bus. He's not really hopping onto the bus. It just means to get on a bus. For example, I hopped on the bus to get to work. Hop on a bus. And then I say, yep. This is just slang for yes. And I say, that was me. Or I'm saying, that was the same as me. And I go on to say, wanting to move back to Michigan too. And Joe says, what? And he just laughs. And then I laugh. And Joe says, but, and but is just filler here. Doesn't really mean anything. And Joe goes on to say, uh, you know, I, at least you moved at an earlier age. Or he's saying, it's good that you moved at an earlier age. And he goes on to say, it's a lot easier because you know, when you're younger, it's just, uh, you know, all the kids are getting familiar with each other. Getting familiar with. This means getting to know. Getting familiar with. For example, Michael met a girl at a bar. They started talking to get familiar with each other. Getting familiar with. And then Joe goes on to say, they're getting familiar with each other, but when you move and you're a little older, the kids already know each other, you know? They've already combined the elementary schools into the middle school uh, for when I had moved there. So combined, this means to put together, combined. For example, there are more people in America than in Thailand and Cambodia combined. Combined. So they've combined the elementary schools. Elementary schools are primary schools. This is school for children between ages 5 and 10. Elementary schools. And when Joe says middle school, they've combined the elementary schools into the middle school. Middle school is school after primary school. So this is school for children between ages 11 and 13. Middle school. And then I say, yeah, but you know, ironically enough, Ironically, this means something you would not think is true, but it, but it is true. 
And I go on to say, um, my older brother, I think, had an easier time adapting. Adapting means getting used to. Adapting. For example, it can be difficult to adapt to living in another country. Adapting. And I go on to say, and he was starting seventh grade. Seventh grade, this is when children are 12 and 13 years old um, in this school grade. And then I go on to say, I was starting third grade. Third grade is children are eight and nine years old when they're in the school grade. And I go on to say, my younger brother was starting second grade. And second grade is children are seven and eight years old at this time or in this school grade. And then I say, and my younger brother and I had a really rough time. Or I'm saying we had a very rough time. Now rough, this means difficult. Rough. An example of rough is, it can be rough to adapt to living in another country. Rough. And then Joe says, yeah, well, and well is just filler here. It's not really needed. And Joe goes on to say, you know, as much as I hated it, or he's saying as much as I did not like it, when I first uh, had moved to Pennsylvania, now in looking back, looking back, this means to think of a time in the past. Looking back. For example, I always smile when I look back on the time I lived in Thailand. Looking back. And then Joe goes on to say, I think it was really a blessing in disguise. A blessing in disguise is something is, that is good that you do not think is good at first. Something that is good that you do not think is good at first. A blessing in disguise. For example, I hated living in Georgia when I first moved there. But it was a blessing in disguise because I got a good education. Blessing in disguise. And then Joe goes on to say, I mean, there were so many other opportunities that came available to us. Or he's saying there's so many good things that happened to us. And he goes on to say, from living in Pennsylvania and going to a school di district or going to a school within a certain area. And Joe goes on to say that, you know, was, uh, had a lot more money. And the education that we got was better. And it just provided me, or it just gave me, uh, with a much better starting point for a college. Or he's saying with, a lot better starting point for college. And then I, I uh, end the conversation by saying, right, just agreeing with Joe. So that is the end of the conversation now. The conversation, moving as a child, part two. So before moving on to Joe's mini story, Make sure that you have a basic understanding of the vocabulary. Go back and listen to it again if you need to. But make sure that you're doing it in a stress-free, relaxed way. And as always, as I always say when you're ready to move on to the mini story, then go to it, go for it. And I will see you next time. All right, bye-bye. Hi, this is Kristen Dodds. And this is Joe Weiss. And we just wanted to let you know that this material has been copyrighted in the year 2008 by Learn Real English, LLC. www.learnrealenglish.com <laughs>